Hi guys, welcome back to another video on our channel. So today we'll be solving a famous problem. Uh, this is under an added edge. So we'll be talking about this question we posted a few days earlier. Right, so two end dots are placed around the outside of the circle at distinct points. N of them are colored red and the remaining N are colored blue. Going around the circle clockwise, you keep account of how many red and blue dots you have passed. Right, so we want to prove that there is a starting point at which you go around the circle clockwise without ever having encountered more red dots than blue dots. Right, so there are an equal number of red and blue dots. And uh, so what we first want to do is we want to illustrate this problem. We want to draw it out and see what it's actually talking about. Right, so some background about this question is, is it has actually been a staple that means it's used in many textbooks, Olympiad guidebooks, worksheets, etc. to teach various concepts. Because there are many different ways we can actually solve this question. And today we'll be presenting one of those ways. Right? And this question is so important that a variant of it even appeared in the H3A levels 2019 as a 7 mark question without guidance. Right? So let's uh, first see what, what the question means. So we always try to figure out what the question is asking for with some small numbers. Right, so when n equals 3, we have 2n, so 6, 6 dots around the circle. So 3 of them will be blue and 3 of them will be red. So consider this configuration over here. Right, so if we pick a random starting point, say this blue one, and we go clockwise, we start with 1 blue and 0 red. As we draw another line here, now we have 2 blues and still no reds. And 2, 1, 2, 2, 3, 2, 3, 3. So, this actually satisfies it because uh, at any point in this uh, in this journey around the circle, there is always uh, the number of blue uh, points is actually always greater than or equals to the number of red points. So you want to show that for every single and not just three, right? No matter how we assign uh, the the colors to the two end points, so no matter how you pick the red points and the blue points, you can always find a starting point such that when you draw the clockwise path of it, every single sequence starting from that point, uh, you will always have the total number of blue dots encountered so far being greater than or equals to the total number of red dots you've encountered in the journey. Right, so we want to transform this question uh, mathematically because talking in blues or reds can be very troublesome. Right, so we can first transform these dots into variables. So we write a1, a2, a3, and since we have two endpoints, the last point should be a2n. So we write it out in a clockwise fashion around the circle. Right, so the question says, going around the circle clockwise, you keep a count of how many red and blue dots you have passed. Right, so this is equivalent of saying we pick a starting point ai. So this i has to be between uh, 1 and 2n. It can be any of these points. So 1 less than i less than 2n, such that every single one of these sequences starting from ai, so it can be just ai alone, ai, ai plus 1, every single set, all the way to uh, back one entire round. So every single sequence should have the number of, sorry, let me move this up a bit, the number of blue elements greater than or equals to the number of red elements. Right, so... You might think of letting uh, x be the number of blue and y be the number of red dots because as we said earlier, it's uh, pretty difficult to talk in terms of colors, right? So uh, e e uh, even if we are changing red and blue to x and y, it doesn't really make a, much of a difference. So our aim here is to reduce the number of variables to less than 2. So a solution to, uh, to solve this problem would be to assign a value of 1 to all the blue dots and a value of minus 1 to the red dots, right? So every single ai from a1 and a2 all the way to a2n must be either minus 1 or 1. So you can only take on these two values, right? So how do we interpret the fact that in each of the sets, the number of blue dots is greater than or equals to the number of red dots? Okay, let's consider an example. Let's say we have a five-membered set. Okay, it starts with, a, let's say, a blue, then a red, then a blue, then a blue, then a red. Right, how do we know that there are more blues than reds? If there are more blues than reds, means there are more ones than minus ones, right? And this would mean that 
the sum of all the elements in the set is greater than or equal to zero. So in this case, since we have more ones than minus ones, the sum of the entire set is one. Where on the other hand, let's say we have uh, one blue dot and three red dots. Right, then the total sum will be minus two. Right, so we want to uh, we can basically redefine the question into the following manner. So a1 to a2n is a sequence of two n numbers on a circle clockwise. So n of these numbers are 1 and the other n of these numbers are minus 1. So we're going to prove that there exists an integer i uh, from 1 to 2n such that every single sequence starting from ai, the sum of every single one of these sequences is greater than or equal to 0. This will mean that at any point in a journey, going from point ai all the way one round around the circle, we will never ever encounter a point of time where uh, we have seen more red dots than blue dots. Right, so, so far we uh, haven't actually made any progress. But what we've done is uh, we've been able to define this question in a mathematical fashion, so it helps us clear our heads, uh, sh shapen, like, sharpen what exactly we want, which will help us later when we are trying to solve this question. Right, so today we'll be presenting the first proof of this question, and as I said earlier, there are actually quite a few ways you can solve this question. So, in the days to come, we'll be uploading more videos uh, showcasing to you the second proof and the third proof, so on and so forth. Right, so I encourage you to, after watching this video, do try and find other ways to solve this question as well. Okay, so look at this condition we've, uh, we've, we are trying to prove over here. So we want to find a point AI such that every sum, every sum of the sequences, uh, the sum of every one of these sequences starting from AI must be non-negative, greater than or equals to zero, right? So wouldn't it be better if it was really big, like we could find some kind of sequence that is really big? Because if, if, the, if the sum is really big, then there's, uh, it's more likely that we don't have to worry about uh, every single one of them being larger than or equals to zero, right? Because uh, if it's really big, then it's more likely to satisfy this condition, you know? So if we think along this line, we can just simply consider the biggest of them all. So we consider every single uh, every single sequence in this entire circle and every single starting point. So it can be any starting point and any ending point. Right? We want to find the largest uh, segment the segment with the largest sum in the circle. Okay? So let's say we've found the segment with the largest sum. So we can, without loss of generality, without loss of generality basically means like uh, without, uh, without making any invalid assumptions, right? So we can let this bigger sum start from A1, right? The question only says uh, some red and blue dots are labeled around the circle, but this A1 uh, to A2N system is, uh, we come up with it ourselves. So we can conveniently just find the, the, the sequence with the largest sum and let the first element be A1, and then A2 is the next element in clockwise direction all the way to ax, right? So let's say this sum here is the largest sum we can find in the entire circle, right? So there is no sequence with a larger sum, right? So if we start from this a1, we can reach the bigger sum. So hopefully, all clockwise paths from this a1 will be non-negative since uh, one of these sequences is really big, right? So maybe there's a chance we want to show that all clockwise paths from it will be non-negative, right? So if we draw it on our diagram, a1 all the way to Ax, this is our largest sum, right? The largest sum in the entire circle, uh, any sequence in a circle, right? We want to show that A1 is a good starting point. So we want to show that for every sequence starting from A1, it is always non-negative, right? Provided that the largest, the sequence with the largest sum also starts with from A1. All right, so how do we go about doing this? We can adopt a method called the proof by contradiction. So we want to show this. So we think about what happens if this isn't the case, right? So what if not all of these sequences are non-negative? Then what would happen? So there must be at least one of the sequences starting from A1 that must be less than zero, right? Because if all of them are non-negative, then we are already done with the question, right? So let's say there is a value k such that a1 plus a2 plus all the way to ak doesn't satisfy our condition, so it's less than zero. So how can, how can we represent this on a diagram? Right, so 
the k can be either in between 1 and x or outside of x, so bigger than x. Right? So let's consider the first case first. So what happens if ak is between a1 and ax? So this would be less than 0, right? But think about what happens now. Right, we know that a1 plus all the way to ax is the biggest, right? But a1 to ak is less than 0. Wouldn't this mean that this region over here from ak plus 1 all the way to ax would have to be even more positive than the larger sum? Right, so uh, think about it. Let's say the larger sum is 5, right? And a1 to ak is negative, let's say it's minus 1. Then this region over here has to be equal to 6 if, if the sum here is going to be equal to 5. Right, because it has to overcom overcompensate for this negative number. But this would contradict our earlier assumption that a1 plus all the way to ax, this is the larger sum, because we found an even larger sum. Right, so we have a problem here, right, because uh, it contradicts our earlier assumption. Right, so we know that k can't be between 1 and x. So what happens if k is bigger than x? Right, so k is now in between x and 2n plus 1. So it's any of these values from x plus 1 all the way to 2n. Right, so we still have the same assumption that a1 plus all the way to ax is the largest sum. Right, now what about this region right here? If this is the largest sum and a1 to ak is less than 0, then this region here has to be very, very negative, right? It must be really negative because uh, let's say this sum is 5 again and our entire sum here is let's say minus 1. Then here we will need uh, a number like minus 6 in order for it to overcompensate for this positive value and become a negative value. So this would mean that the absolute value of ax plus 1 all the way to ak is even bigger than a1 plus all the way to ax. But at this point, it isn't a contradiction yet, right? Because if this is 5 and this is minus 6, although the absolute value is bigger, but they, we only care about the largest sum. Minus 6 itself is a very small number, although its absolute value is very big. right? So we haven't actually reached a contradiction yet. But uh, we missed out one uh, consideration. We missed out one condition in the question, and that is that the sum of all 2n numbers is equal to 0. This is because we have n red dots and n blue dots, right? And since uh, this means we have an equal number of 1s and minus 1s, so the sum of all the two numbers is 0. So if we go back to the question, uh, the diagram earlier, remember we have a, a section here with absolute value even greater than the range from 1 to x, although it's very negative. Let's say this is 5, this is minus 6. Now what would happen to this section, all the numbers from this point all the way here, they would be the opposite of this, right? Because the, all the numbers add up to zero. So this number would be positive and have an absolute value bigger than the larger sum. Right, so if we look at it algebraically, the sum of the two n numbers is zero, and the sum of ax plus one all the way to ak is a very huge value but negative. So the other range here is a very huge value and positive. And this very huge value will be even bigger than the original biggest value we had. And this is yet another contradiction. So what have we, uh, what have we learned from these two contradictions? At first, we, su we suggested that let's say there is a point k such that, uh, let's go back. Okay, let's, let's say there is a point k that doesn't satisfy this condition. Right, that such that a1 plus all the way to ak is less than 0. So let's say this is true. Now we consider what happened if k is here or k is here. And we've shown that both cannot be possible. And since both cannot be possible, this condition that we assumed cannot be possible as well. And therefore, every single sequence starting from a1 has to be non negative. And therefore, we've proven the question that we can always find a starting point on the diagram such that every single sequence starting from it is bigger than or equals to zero. All right, so that's it for this question. That's it for the, the first solution to this question. So do try out this question at home, continue to try and find different solutions, and next week, we will upload our solution 
our second and third solutions to this question. Alright, so thank you for tuning in and uh, look forward to our next videos.